So this is a strictly underground place. We can't tell you where it is. We can't give you the address. But uh, if you know us, we'll hook you up and then patronize this joint, support them. Because this is the kind of cool things that make San Francisco what it is. And it's the stuff we like to do too. Oh my God, Robbie. Yes, that's again. Oh, yeah. That was so Scotty's in the house. Reality check! <laughs> <laughs> it was this big. Some ghoulish DJing tonight, too. Look out. Of course. Yes. Yes. To raise the dead, I'm sure. Fellow reality checkers, this here is an authentic human shrunken head from the jungles of Javaro. It's about uh, 40, 50, 60 years old, actually. And I just named him tonight because Marla said I should name it. So I named it Holly, after our friend Holly Stevens, uh, the clown porn goddess, you know, so. But it's real. Tonight we're gonna be talking with Shane Bugby, the founder of all things strange. Uh, he was one of the uh, experts on John Wayne Gacy and other serial killers. Uh, well, hello again, uh, folks out there viewing Reality Check. I am uh, Felicia, or tonight known as Lady Mortiz. I will be offering my titillating talents and expertise on the dead. So. Stay tuned. Well, my name is Shane. Hi, Shane. Hi, how are you? Uh, <laughs> I've been doing underground um, communications for almost 30 years. So I've dealt with obscene books. Um, Anton LaVey, San Francisco, yo, yo. Like, uh, hey. yeah. Yeah, he, he, Satanic fun. Yeah, he, I was friends with him for a bit. I did the last interview with LaVey, and he made me the last, that was the last person before he died to... He made a record in the Church of Satan, so there's my history in San Francisco. Oh, that's too bad. Too bad that he made me a reverend. For me as a metalhead, it was a the greatest award of my life. It was like, how do you get better? You know, it's like growing up and selling my soul for the first Ozzy Osbourne solo record, then Anton LaVey gives me this award. It was the, I thought it was the greatest thing that would ever happen to me. I worked with John Wayne Gacy. I helped him do a book when he was in prison. I've worked with Richard Ramirez. I was good friends with Richard. He loved Asian porn, and you could actually send him Asian porn in his prison. San, Fran San Francisco, baby, you can send Asian porn to dudes on death row, and that's what, it, that's what Richard wanted. I want Asian porn and pictures of girls' feet. And that's what he liked, and you know. <laughs> and, and so I liked him because he admitted it. He was like, I liked it. I liked every part of it. it you know, so, so I worked with Dorothea Puente, a California killer. I did a cookbook with her. Yeah, and um, I work with G.G. Allen, okay, so I have some crazy, uh, I guess, stories and stuff like that. I'm hoping that you guys will uh, have questions to ask, and this could be just like a conversation, because I really don't want to talk at you, really. Yeah, what would you, you do with G.G. Allen? I remember one time G.G. Allen, when he, when he got out of prison, he invited me to the show, and he was the nicest guy on the phone, he's much like El Duce or any of the underground folks that come off as real crazy. Um, G.G. Allen um, was like, come on, hang out at the show, dude. And I'm like, you know, I, I really cannot do that. Because at one time he told me, you get too close to the G.G. fire, you get burned. And one of my friends, Mark Hainer, a filmmaker, he was doing a documentary with G.G. Allen. And literally I got to see some of the footage of G.G. beating the shit out of him and pulling down his pants and starting to like, stick his fingers in his ass and stuff like that. <laughs> As a playful, like, hey, we're buddies, right? So I was like, you know, I'm just not getting close to the GG fire. <laughs> we, were, we were cool, and I almost feel like I, I missed out on going to see him live, but then again, I, uh, you know, I don't need any of that. <laughs> okay, what about gay safe? Like part of his thing was he never wanted to be labeled gay or whatever it was. I'm not a homosexual. Uh, did he ever say, but I was gay as hell, sucking this dude's dick or whatever it was? Oh, yeah. Gacy would invite people into the prison like myself, like I'd never go see him just like I never went to see G.G. Allen. 
Um, and he would, when he got, he paid off the guards with all his painting money. He'd buy frozen pizzas and shit like that. And when, when visitors would come to see Gacy, um, the guards would lock the door and he'd chase him around the room and try to rape him. So Gacy had a whole, he had an industry with those paintings. He, he really was running the death row thing and he was able to get, he was able to get a young, uh, you know, an 18 year old or 20 year old fresh, freshly convicted young man into his cell once a week, you know, for some frozen pizzas and paint off the guards. Getting to know Gacy, he loved every painting he said he masturbated to. Every one of those paintings he masked, he dropped the load <laughs> based on hurting victim, hurting, re-hurting those family members, you know, re-hurting them. You know what I'm saying? So he really enjoyed making those paintings and getting into people. Same with Thea. But the, the thing with Thea's thing is, she's a fucking old lady. How does no one in the world ever question that? How did the old lady drag these bodies into her backyard and bury them? I move dead bodies all day long, every day. It's not difficult, and I'm not very big. You think? 200 pounds, 300 pounds? Yeah. yeah. So that's they don't give me any help, unless it's something yeah. I really can't move. I have to call a lifting team, but it's all technique. Well, but, but did you dig, then, you know, dig not, uh, six foot holes, too? Well, I have exhumed bodies before, but, okay, you know, I mean, I did have help digging, you Yeah, know? Thea had help, I, 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 I figured she had help, and she, you know, I mean. Yeah. Same, you know. It's all technique. Yeah, she wasn't a crate builder either. <laughs> Is that true that you have more weight in you when you die? Um, not necessarily. You know, I think what's harder to move a dead body is when they actually are flaccid. They just they flop about. Rigor mortis is actually easier to move, or an embalmed body because they're posed, they're stiff. You can. <laughs> You can move them. The flaccid body, I've dropped a couple, so that's why I, that's why I can say that. And you can just, you, you can drag a body around, is what you're saying, huh? Yeah. You want to try to drag me across the floor? It's not in these heels, baby. Okay. Last serial killer, I was like, oh, this is interesting, is BTK. And I thought he was interesting, and then I watched the CBS movie of the week. And it was like, you know, so lame because he's like, they, he's like his victim, he's about to kill her, and he's like, here's a cigarette, here's your last cigarette. But that's not what he did. He would smoke the cigarette and put it out on her face. You know, and that's what he would do. And then they're selling like vanilla ice cream in between these BTK fucking moments. And I was like, that dude was brutal. Like he tortured me. I went to jail for residential burglary, okay? I'm a little kid, I'm 16, charged as an adult, okay? Listen, I didn't rob the house, I just sold the TV. <laughs> so, I'm chained to them, I'm just a little kid, I'm 16, they're charging me as an adult. So I'm an adult fucking jail. And I'm chained to one of the Chicago Rippers. And these guys went around Chicago and they would get prostitutes, cut their tits off, put them in their freezer for satanic rituals, pound two by fours up their cunts and throw them in dumpsters. Yeah, exactly. Tell us about this little event you're doing. Well, it's a, this, let's, it's a Halloween event. I like Halloween, and I thought it'd be cool to uh, hash out, uh, talk some talk some shit with people, you know, like uh, have a conversation about the dark side, let's say. But I feel it's just reality, like life. Like what did LeVay say? Evil is live, spelled backwards. That's true, it is. You know? Live. Mortise. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. God damn it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me, Thank it was you a so pleasure, an I, absolute pleasure. See, we could say, see, you heard her. Thank you for having me. Hey, who brought who brought you into this mess? This guy. It's my fault. <laughs> All his fault. It's always Danny's fault. Yeah, it is. Every time. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Lady yes. Mortise. Oh, goodness. Uh, anytime. So Perfect. Anytime. You are perfect, and your act was perfect. And thank you so much for schooling me, standing up, saying, "Hey, yo, I can drag a fucking body." Dead Dorothy Puente could have drug a body. How dare you think so little of us women? Put your back into it. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that, yo. Thanks, Danny. Love you, girl. Hey, you gotta get. Yeah, right, isn't this what everyone does? No kabumps here. I, I don't know. I'm old man. I feel like that's what people do. Why, why are we so fascinated with serial killers? What is people's fascination with them? I just think it's a fascination with themselves, like uh, their animal. You know, we're so far removed from our animal at this point, and not by, um, not on, not on our, uh, not by choice. We've been removed from our animal pharmaceutically uh, and, uh, and other reasons. So, you know, so we've been over-socialized. If you read the Unabomber Manifesto, there's a lot of answers for that. So, 
I think it's much like when the old men back when we were young, you know, we're the same age, maybe 20, 30 years ago, they'd watch National Geographic and watch the Black Panther eat the zebra. It's the same kind of shit. But, but now it's very uh, titillating to people because they're repressed. So it's sexual. They don't, like I showed that one video and you saw everyone left, the mouse torture and they can't stand to see a mouse tortured, but they can most certainly watch the BTK rape scene that doesn't show them putting a fucking cigarette out on her face. You know, and that to me is disturbing deeply. Like, people have lost touch of or what, re what murder is, reality. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know any of us that kill our own cows either. You know, it's, it's all done for us. So it's sort of the same trip. We don't, we don't kill our meat. So we don't get how... I love to eat meat. Yeah, but we don't get how brutal it is. If you had to kill your own pigs, you might eat less meat. Right. You know, because you'd see them, you'd be like, oh, that, that's Wilbur. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about... And you maybe, you know, like, I know farmers, they kill their pigs, and it's named Wilbur, and they're like, it's a ritual to them. They're like, oh, this is Wilbur, he's good. He's feeding our family. But, but um, you know, buying it in the store is bacon. There's no name to it. You've got some new books out and stuff? It's a book and movie. They really go together. You gotta have them both. So we don't really we don't sell them separate. That's how it goes. So um, it's like a 350 page book and an hour and a half movie. It's, it's a part uh, our road diaries, living on the road for a year with only 180 bucks to leave, no credit cards, no nothing. And so that's that part of it. And then there's interviews with people like Ian McKay or uh, Mike uh, Williams from I Hate God. You know. Um, John Sinclair from the White Panthers, you know, was, uh, and John Lennon wrote a song about him. So there's all that. There's interviews with people like that that we hung out with or cross pat, you know. You have a website? Shanebugby.com. It's new. <laughs> That's right. Get all his good stuff and, and get the real underground shit right here from this man, yeah. my, my bro. Too much lights. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Shane. Great show tonight, brother. All right. Oh,